Good shout, good shout. <laughs> you reckon that's just ruined our spot or what? If you're new here, my wife Hannah and I are road tripping from London in the UK to Bodrum in Turkey, diving everywhere we go and occasionally catching our own dinner. We've already been diving in Spain, France, Croatia, Montenegro, and now we're currently in Albania. Be sure to check out our previous episodes to get up to speed, but right now we're going for our final dive in Albania. Once again, we're favoring the afternoon session. I've just always had more luck at sunset rather than sunrise. Let me know your preference in the comments. The wind was much stronger than anticipated and the swim out was actually quite difficult, especially for Hannah dragging around the big camera to film us. However, the quality you get out of it is unmatched. Patrick and I knew where we wanted to dive, a massive sheer rock wall that sits in the current and drops to over 30 meters. Before getting to that spot, we both wanted to get the air out of our wetsuits and have a few warm-up dives. It's often overlooked, but I find it can make a big difference. Sometimes I haven't been warmed up and I've missed opportunities on fish due to lack of breath hold or relaxation. Depending on how frequently you are spearfishing will affect how long it takes to get warmed up. Given I'd been diving a few times a week for the past two months, I only needed a handful of dives to feel comfortable. Hannah decided she didn't want to come all the way out to the wall and she made a fantastic call. We didn't realize it at the time, but it would be a dangerous location to dive. We finally got to the wall, anchored up my float and I had the first dive. There was a bit of current and loads of bait. I knew it was going to be fishy. The top of the wall here is about 17 meters. I can see shoals of sargos and I'm about to see a lovely gold blotched grouper off to my right. There are a few gold blotched groupers getting around and right on the sand line at 30 meters, I can see amberjacks rubbing themselves on the bottom. You can see the flash of one doing this behavior in the distance. I didn't make it all the way to the bottom, but I figured those amberjacks were going to hang around because of these clouds of bait fish. going off his head. I saw like four gold blotch grippers come off the sand. I saw amberjacks rubbing their like bodies on the sand. There what? was all sorts of stuff mate. Amberjacks rubbing their bodies. I like on the sand like getting parasites off on of the much? bottom. No, I saw like two in the distance right off there but they were like maybe like three kilos but I didn't get right to the bottom but woo, fishy as mate. Like lots of uh, lots of steer the gold blotches everywhere. With it being a little deeper here, as well as current, we watched each other closely on each dive. It was October and not many tourist boats drive around here, but you never know what's going to turn up in Albania. It was my turn next and I was so thankful to have someone watching my back. I'm on my way down to Grouper Paradise and I can hear Patrick screaming at me from the surface. At first I thought there may have been an amberjack behind me, but he was signalling to come to the surface. The massive ferry boat going from Saranda to Corfu was heading straight for us. It seems a long distance off with the action camera perspective, but we could clearly see all the people on the boat and it was only around 20 metres away. <laughs> oh mate, good shout, good shout. <laughs> you reckon that's just ruined our spot or what? Jeez, that's a big boat. If that boat would have run us over, I don't even want to think of the consequences. We both had several more dives and all the groupers had gone inside their holes. Time to swap to the 60 centimeter cave gun again. I head back down to start looking in holes. The last time I was here, Fabian had two groupers stuck in a hole, which took us ages to get out. 
I can see a grouper heading for its lair and try to continue sinking quietly. Unfortunately, I think the fish was hiding in the hole below which I didn't have a good look in, but I was also really distracted by how loud the engine noise was that I could hear. Now I'm starting to look up and see if there is another boat right on top of us. Another high speed ferry blazing through the area. Admittedly, not quite as close this time, thankfully. Jace. We decided on a few more dives each. The current has dragged my float, so I go down to move the anchor. I soon get distracted by one of the tastiest fish in the sea. I'm still not sure how I didn't get a kill shot on this stationary scorpion fish. I saw it on the way down. Huh? I saw it on the way down. Shot it on the way down. Yeah, I saw it on the way down. Oh. So where the, the float is anchored is on the plateau at like 18 and then it drops off and it's like that real good stuff. Patrick dived and soon after I heard his gun go off. He returns to the surface with a nice Mediterranean parrotfish. What a shot dude! These are excellent to eat raw, especially with a perfect stone shot. Despite all the bait fish in the water, we didn't see any amberjacks again and decided to call it a day with the sun setting as we swam in. That night we enjoyed the carpaccio maybe just a little bit too much and got amongst the nightlife that Saranda has to offer. It was an incredible week hanging out with Patrick and Flo and one we'll never forget. Best of luck to you two moving to the Dominican Republic. We really hope to visit you there soon. We left the next morning a little worse for wear and ended up in Thessaloniki in Greece for a few days, slowly making our way to Turkey. We're actually in Thessaloniki in the northern part of Greece. We're on our way to Turkey from Albania and these are some of the scorpion fish I shot in Albania that I'm bringing over to us that we're going to cook tonight on this massive coal grill that I've been working for the last couple of hours. And yesterday I actually managed to sneak out for a dive along here and grab two octopus. So I have boiled those to tenderize them until I can stick a fork through them along with some vegetables. Yamas. As always, keeping it simple, olive oil and salt. It's a very emotional experience being here in Greece and cooking an octopus over an open fire as long as along with some scorpena. Or it could just be the smoke. What is going on here? Just use, I'm using the garden light to uh, check the progress of the scorpion fish and they're <laughs> slowly getting there. Get a nice char grill on it. Okay. You've got that. That Ooh. looks pretty damn tasty. Oh, they look amazing. There's yours. Oh. If it grows together, it goes together. These scorpion fish are so incredibly delicious. If you ever get the opportunity to spear one, I highly encourage you to do so. On that barbecue. Something else. And the octopus, my nemesis in the kitchen, didn't do so well in Portugal last year, but this year. It's tender, the flavor is amazing, the barbecue really elevates it. Super stoked on this meal. Our next stop is Turkey, so if you like this kind of content, if you like these videos, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell so you get notified when the next one goes up. 
We'll see you in Turkey. Dinner time! I take back what I say about other Mediterranean countries. Turkey definitely has the most fish I've ever seen.